We are going to talk about the war and its consequences. First, we are going to talk about the history. Then, we will tell you about the siege of Leningrad. Then you will learn about the Immortal Regiment. We think that it's really important to appreciate films and books about the war. Because they can show us the war events from different perspectives. We will give you a list of films and books. And we hope you will choose some for watch and read. After this, you will have a unique opportunity to watch the interview with the survivor of the war, Lobova Nina Fyodorovna, one of our students' relatives. We will show you some of her memories of those times. Make sure that you watch attentively, as at the end of the presentation you will have an opportunity to take a quiz and check your knowledge. The Second World War lasted from September 1, 1939 to September 2, 1945 and became the largest armed conflict in the history of mankind. It involved 62 countries out of 73 that existed at that time. This is 80% of our planet. Currently, World War II is the only conflict in which nuclear weapons have been used. Only 20% of men born in the Soviet Union in 1923 survived the war. During the siege of Stalingrad, the Russian side lost more military and civilian people than the United States and Great Britain combined during the entire World War II. Human losses worldwide reached about 65 million people, 26 million of whom were citizens of the USSR. For the entire World War II, the German armed forces suffered the most on the Soviet front, 70 to 80 percent of the losses. During the entire war, about 7 million German citizens died. After the war, Adolf Hitler's former advisor, Joachim von Ribbentrop, voiced three main reasons for Germany's defeat. Unexpectedly stubborn Soviet resistance, global supplies of weapons and equipment from the United States and the successes of Western allies in the fight for air domination. The Holocaust led to the violent death of 60% of European Jews and the extermination of about a third of the entire Jewish population of our planet. During World War II, 6 and 9th August, 1945, the United States carried out atomic bombings on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in order to accelerate the surrender of Japan. About 70 to 80,000 people died during the bombing of Hiroshima. At the same time, some of the dead who were near the explosion simply disappeared in fraction of a second, breaking up into molecules in hot air. According to Hitler's calculation, in 1941, the Soviet Union, as a mighty power, was supposed to cease to exist. Then Hitler would not have an enemy behind his back, and he would receive a large amount of raw materials and agricultural products. It was almost impossible to determine at least approximately the military power of the Soviet Union during the war. For 20 years, the USSR reported information about itself only when it was in the interests of the government. Often, the announced data was embellished, and where this was beneficial, the position was shown to be less favorable than in reality. During the siege of Leningrad, according to various sources, from 600,000 to 1.5 million people died. Only 3% of them died from bombing and shelling. The main 97% died of starvation. Before the war, Leningrad was one of the largest industrial centers of the Soviet Union. Despite the siege of Leningrad, death, hunger, and the closure of many factories, the city's enterprises continued to operate, but in smaller volumes. The Battle of Stalingrad, which took place during World War II, became one of the most bloodiest in the history of mankind. 
during the battle which lasted from July 17, 1942 to February 2, 1943, more than 470,000 Soviet soldiers and about 300,000 German soldiers died. The victory of the Soviet army in this battle highly raised the political and military prestige of the Soviet Union. The scale of the celebration in honor of Victory Day in the USSR began to increase only 20 years after the actual victory, thanks to Leonid Ilyich Brezhnev. For the first 20 years, the Russian arranged only fireworks. In the first 20 post-war years, only one parade in honor of the victory was held on the territory of the USSR, June 24, 1945. World War II ended on September 2, 1945, when Sain and Act board the American battleship Missouri on the unconditional surrender of Japan. Now we are going to talk about one of the most tragic but at the same time heroic events in the history of the Great Patriotic War about the siege of Leningrad. It's a military blockade of the city of Leningrad by German troops during the Great Patriotic War. Leningrad is now called St. Petersburg. For the USSR, Leningrad was a very important city and its loss would lead to disaster since a large military grouping of Soviet troops was based in Leningrad the retreat of which would open the way to Moscow. And Leningrad was also a large industrial center. The significance of the city in the eyes of the people was enormous, and its loss would destroy their hope for victory. The Germans didn't want to take Leningrad by storm, as they would have suffered heavy losses. Therefore, the plan was to encircle and blockade the city in order to force it to surrender. Hitler couldn't even think that all his plans would fail. He literally wanted to starve millions of people in this city, but the Soviet people turned out to be stronger. Soon there was an incredible shortage of food in Leningrad, as a result of which there was a large-scale famine, there was no heating or electricity. In Leningrad, people received bread and other products in stores by ration cars, standing in a huge queues. People were in a difficult physical and mental condition. They were given only 125 grams of bread, which wasn't enough. To survive, people ate glue and cellulose cakes. Everyone did their best to look for food watching how dozens or hundreds of people died of malnutrition every day. At that time, about 3 million people lived in Leningrad. The supply of the city was entirely dependent on imported products. The only road connection between Leningrad and the rest of the world was Lake Ladoga. This path was called the Road of Life. However, only a small amount of food could be sent to Leningrad because the road was constantly fired up and by the Germans. The children began to be evacuated along the Road of Life. There were very few places, the road was terrible and difficult, and the children were mortally emaciated, and it was necessary to choose those who can survive. A terrible, tragic choice. The children were told, You see, the floor is dirty. Take a broom and sweep the floor. Show how you can do it. And those children, who still had strength, took a broom and began to sweep. Maybe they also didn't have strength, but they still had a willpower. This is how doctors chose those who would be able to move the road and be saved. This is a terrible story, but in besieged Leningrad there was no other way out. Take a broom, sweep the room. Now this phrase means that you shouldn't give up, but must move forward, overcoming difficulties. If you have willpower, then you will succeed. 
During this period, some people kept diaries and wrote down their observations there, which are evidence of this terrible and tragic period. Several notes have survived. Elena Skrabina, a resident of the besieged city of Leningrad, wrote in her diary, Death dominates the city. People die. Today, as I walked down the street, a man was walking in front of me. He could hardly move his legs. Overtaking him, I involuntarily drew attention to his blue face. I thought, probably he will die soon. After a few steps, I turned around, stopped, watched him. He sank down on the curbstone, his eyes rolled back, then he slowly began to slide to the ground. When I approached him, he was already dead. People are so weak from hunger that they don't resist death. They die as if they are falling asleep. Nevertheless, people continued to work in factories and children went to school. Later, those who survived the siege admit that mainly those who were doing something were able to survive. And those people who wanted to save energy by staying at home usually died in their homes. The siege of Leningrad was completely lifted during the Leningrad-Novgorod operation in 1944. As a result of the powerful attack of the Soviet troops, German troops were driven back from Leningrad to a distance of 100 kilometers. The siege of Leningrad during the Great Patriotic War lasted 872 days. During the entire period of the siege, from 600,000 to 1.5 million people died. Leningrad on May 1, 1945 was named a hero city for the heroism and courage shown by the inhabitants of the city of Leningrad. Throughout the war, people showed their heroism and patriotism. This terrible event only proved the fortitude of the people, their courage and love for their homeland. We will remember forever the heroes who died for the great future of their country. The first of the famous actions similar in content to the Immortal Regiment was held in 1965. When Victory Day became an unworking holiday, then activists and students of school number 121 in Novosibirsk created the Walk of Fame of Siberian soldiers and carried along photo portraits of still living frontline soldiers in honor of the victory in the Second World War. Since then, this is a regular event in Novosibirsk. Since 1985, every year on May 9th, the same content of the action is held in the Lipisk region in the village of Konkolodis. In 2009, in Sevastopol, descendants of veterans held a march named We Will Replace You in the Formation. In 2007, at the initiative of the chairman of the Council of Veterans of the Tumane region, a parade of winners was held in Tumane. This initiative was taken up and two years later such parades were held in about 20 regions of Russia. The first immortal regiment campaign called Immortal Regiment was first held in Tomsk in 2012 on May 9th. It was initiated by three local journalists. In 2011, they drew attention to the thinning ranks of veterans of the Second World War from year to year. Knowing about the spontaneous tradition that arose in the USSR to bring photos of their relatives to the memorials of the fallen, Tomsk journalists took it as a basis. A sharp increase in the popularity of the idea of the Immortal Regiment was promoted by coverage of the action in regional and federal media. Immortal Regiment was formed as a public, non-profit, voluntarily civil initiative, which anyone can take part in. The campaign quickly became international. In February 2013, 30 cities in Russia, Ukraine, Kazakhstan and Israel expressed their desire to organize the Immortal Regiment. Every year, 
Every year the number of cities and countries participating in the campaign continues to grow. In addition, since 2012, there is a national chronicle of the immortal regiment, where any descendant can enter the history of their ancestor. A veteran of the Great Second World War. Since 2016, the Interregional Search Center Immortal Regiment has been operating, which helps people determine the fate of their relatives who went missing or died during the Second World War. The memory of the war is also preserved by employees and members of the Russian Military Historical Society, who regularly take part in the march. Now I'd like to tell you about the films which are connected with the Second World War. On the first day of the war, it was the Brest fortress that stood in the way of the German fascists. The film sharply shows the contrast between the peaceful and happy life of ordinary people and what the war turned it into. Based on the archival documents, the film shows the defense of the Brest fortress. The main character is a small Jewish girl who managed to survive in inhumane conditions. Her life is already full of pain and suffering. The relentless war, the loss of her parents, the need to hide in a large fireplace in the German commandant's office. We see how she grows up, learns to survive and turns into a real fighter. This is a story of a brave and strong woman who not only managed to endure all the hardships of war, but also did so much to fight the enemy. A woman who befriended Eleanor Roosevelt and attended a conference that greatly influenced the course of the war. Only a couple of hours separated the Germans from Moscow when a division under the command of General Panfilov got in their way. This was such a talented military leader that the fighters called themselves Panfilovci and fought to the last with an enemy significantly superior to them in strength. The story of the five young girls' anti-aircraft gunners on whose shoulders lay all the hardships of the war. There are two versions of this film. One was made in 1972 and another one is the remake which was made in 2015. Both these films are brilliant and worth seeing. Contents of the book The Dawn's Here Quiet by Boris Vasilyev, May 1942 the Soviet Union is at war with the Germans. Somewhere in the outback of Russia, in the village, a patrol is serving. The crew's commander is a 32-year-old foreman, Fedot Vaskov, a kind and responsible person. One day, Vaskov's patrol receives a replenishment in the form of a group of anti-aircraft gunners. The girls bring life to the quiet life of the unit. At night, the Zinicheski shoot at German planes and during the day they do their housework, sunbathe, etc. In June, one of the anti-aircraft gunners, Rita Sanina, notices two German scouts in the forest who are walking towards the strategic facilities of the USSR. Having learned about this, Vaskov gathers a team of five anti-aircraft gunners and leads her in search of the enemy. The team, in addition to Vaskov, includes Rita Asanina, Zhenya Komilkova, Galia Chetvertak, Lisa Brichkina and Sonia Gurich. In the forest, Vaskov's team discovers that there are not two Germans, but 16 people. Vaskov understands that the enemy is outnumbered and can't be fought open to death. However, the foreman also understands that the Germans shouldn't be allowed further to their goal. Vaskov sends one of the anti-aircraft gunners, Lisa Brichkina, to the patrol for help. On the way, Lisa drones in a swamp. As a result, at the junction, no one realizes that Vaskov's detachment is in trouble. Meanwhile, Vaskov and the female anti-aircraft gunners are watching the Germans in the forest and trying to confuse them, in order to gain time while waiting for help. The Germans, in turn, are watching the enemy, 
the end clashes take place between Vasco's detachment and the Germans, during which all the anti-aircraft gunners selflessly die. The wounded Vaskov is left alone with the enemy. He searches for the sleeping Germans in the forest and takes them prisoner. Losing consciousness, the wounded Vaskov leads the prisoners to the patrol. After the war, Vaskov remains disabled without an arm. He adopts the son of Rita Senina, one of the dead female anti-aircraft gunners. And now let's watch a short interview where you will see one of our students asking her grandmother questions about the war that she survived. She shares some important and interesting facts from her life which will give you a deep understanding of the war. <laughs> Был такой момент, когда должен, уже бои шли в Орле, а наша деревня, где мы жили у бабушки, она ну, недалеко от Орла была. И там от станции было 22 километра. Немцы... То есть уже наступали наши, немцы уже готовились к тому, чтобы покинуть, потому что покинуть наш вот этот район, деревню, потому что они знали, что здесь уже не удержится. Уже была слышна канонада, и немцы решили сжечь деревню. Всех моих родных, маму, бабушку, и, значит, маминого брата и ее сестру закрыли в погреб. Но там погреба были не такие, как вот, допустим, обычные наши понятия о погребе. А там было, ну, как бы, свод погреба был над землей, а все остальное выходило туда в землю. Там были порожки, и вот там все хранилось. Было там всегда холодно, то есть... Хранили там и молоко, и все, все, и все там хранилось, не говоря уже про картошку и капусту и овощи всякие. Вот. Их закрыли в этот погреб, оставили меня. И осталось... Нет, бабушки в погребе не было. Она болела, и ее оставили в избе. А к тому времени, когда немцам уже уходить, наши деревенские уже знали некоторые слова, немецкие и то есть понимали о чем идет речь и один ходил это как потом мне уже рассказывали я конечно это еще не соображала один ходил все это пытался зажечь дом обложили там снопами соломы а другой наоборот отговаривал его у тебя тоже мол где-то там мама в германии оставь покоя эту женщину потому что может кто-то ее пожалеет ну, в общем, не получилось у них зажечь дом, срочно пришлось уносить ноги. Ну, вот такой был, конечно, страшный эпизод. Но слава богу, что обошлось без вот этих пожаров. И особенно вот в нашей деревне, вот здесь, там, ну, как рассказывали взрослые, немцы там не зверствовали. В одной деревне там они, они, конечно, боялись партизан. Ну, там они, по-моему, кого-то, кто-то погиб там от рук фашистов. А так они лояльно себя вели по отношению к жителям. Но в то же время они вырубили все леса, потому что боялись партизан. И вот которые леса сейчас там, ну, даже в детстве, потом, когда уже после войны я уже стала взрослой, стала ездить туда к бабушке, когда она еще была жива, на каникулы. И потом уже, когда работать пошла, леса, конечно, были все молодые. И мы часто ходили там, которые были близко. Еще бы и окопы не заросшие, и скелеты лежали человеческие. И вот где-то вот в этих, ну, где предполагаемый был этот окоп, ну, конечно, он уже там и обварилось все, и все это землей поросло. 
и крупная-крупная земляника росла. Вот она сама в рот просилась. Но мы никогда, вот дети, несмотря на то, что любили все ягоды, никогда не собирали вот эту землянику. И для нас было кощунственно положить в рот вот эту красивую сладкую ягоду. Потому что мы не знали, кто там, чьи там останки русского, немца. Но все равно было кощунственно что-то такое брать вот с этих окопов, которые превратились уже в могилы. Там долго еще находились скелеты. И после войны там было очень много всякого военного снаряжения. Был такой... We all know that the Second World War is a terrible event that affected a huge number of people and countries. Now we will hold a quiz and see how each of you is aware of the main events of that period. You are given 10 seconds to answer the question. So let's start. Question number one. When was the Second World War? The correct answer is 2, 1939 to 1945. Question number 2. Why did tens of millions of people die? The correct answer is genocides, massacres, premeditated death from starvation and disease. Question number three. Which armed forces suffered the most losses on the Soviet front? The correct answer is three, the German. Question number four. What the United States did carry out on August 6 and 9, 1945? The correct answer is one. Atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Question number five. How many people approximately died during the siege of Leningrad? The correct answer is 3, 1.5 million. Question number 6. When did the Battle of Stalingrad last? And the correct answer is 2, 1942 to 1943. Question number 7. Where was the act of unconditional surrender signed? The correct answer is 1. Aboard the American battleship Missouri. Question number 8. When was the immortal regiment action held for the first time? The correct answer is for 1965. Question number 9. What city was the first action Immortal Regiment held? The correct answer is 2. Tomsk. Question number 10. What year has the National Chronicle of the Immortal Regiment been kept? The correct answer is 3, 2012. Question number 11. What was Leningrad during the Second World War for the USSR?
and the correct answer is 1. A large industrial center. Question number 12. What was the road connection between Leningrad and the rest of the world? The correct answer is 3. Lake Ladoga. Question number 13. When was the siege of Leningrad completely lifted? The correct answer is to 1944. Question number 14. How many days did the siege of Leningrad last? The correct answer is for 872 days. And the last question. When was Leningrad named a hero city? The correct answer is 3, 1945. So, thank you very much for participating in our quiz. Thank you very much for watching. It is really important to remember our past. Nobody wants to repeat the war, ever. If we remember what really happened, this will help us to realize how important it is to stay connected. We have only one planet and we need to live on it in peace. А всем какие пожелания? Любите свою страну, любите свою отчизну. Она стоит этого. Где-то, может быть, за границей что-то и лучше, но все равно лучше нашей России нету. Так мы же за границей пожелания отправляем. А? Южноамериканским ученикам. А, -а, -а. Ага. вон она что. А я-то думаю, это где-то что-то здесь. Но все равно, любите свою страну, изучайте историю, потому что это, во-первых, интересно, во-вторых, знания никогда не бывают лишними. И нужно гордиться историей своей страны, а чтобы, этим, а чтобы гордиться ею, то надо стремиться к миру между народами. И не допускать никаких агрессивных выпадов, никаких неприятных, необъективных суждений, никаких обвинений голословных. А это часто случается, когда люди не знают историю и услышат где-то что-то, и начинают это выдавать за действительное. В общем, всем счастья, всем мира и добра. Спасибо большое. Отлично получилось.